what's up boys day 72 here with episode 3 of the Brooklyn Bellows franchise mode here at the beginning of year number 2 we come to a bit of a crossroads as we finished last season pretty pits understandably but now we say are we ready to make that little bit uh, that little bit of a jump to being a tweener type of team a wild card slash 15th 14th type of team are we ready to make that jump or do we stay at the bottom what kind of team are we going to be so here are how the lines we left off last episode taking some advice from all you bellows and uh, synthesizing it into what I think we're going to do we went through the trade blocks we looked at possible things I tried a bunch of deals that are that were um, that were possible. I tried a bunch of things with people who were on the block. I looked at, uh, like, let's say, who's on the block over here. I looked at deals involving a lot of different centers and looking at center depth. But uh, what I've come to, this is the deal that I've come to. I found this one to, to looks like it's going to work. And this is what I'm going to go with for right now. So here's what I'm thinking. From Colorado, Derek Broussard, Carl Soderberg, both on the block. I don't want... I don't know if I want both of these guys, but listen, if I could get Tyson Jost, 81 overall, 21 years old, 2.74 for the next couple years, if I can get him, he, he could play second line, he has good puck skills, he has good shooting, he's not the best centerman at 77, but he's still, a, he's still decent enough. If I could get him along with either Derek Broussard or Carl Soderberg and defenseman, and then package that up and give them some 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 pieces. That would be interesting. Now Derek Broussard, 31 years old, 82 overall, 48 points last season. Carl Soderberg has the same amount of years, but a 1.425 quick math less on his contract. So he is a 30 point guy, and he is two years older. So I'm thinking, yes, we go with Broussard get him and now we pick up a defenseman as well so on defense I'm thinking because I can't add too much more value so I'm thinking Sam Gerrard would have been nice might be a bit much oh, I, I will try Sam Gerrard he might be a bit much if not I might go for Eric Gustafson so these are the three pieces I'd like to get Jost goes second line center Broussard goes third line center Pavelski I I'm thinking I was thinking of trading Pavelski but you know he's our captain we signed him to a big deal last season. It wouldn't be realistic to trade him after one season where we were pits. So I'm not going to trade him this season, but I will probably look to trade him next season. Going back the other way, Yanni Gord. Not too impressed with Yanni Gord. He's making over 5 mil. He's 5'9". In the real world, yeah, he got 64 points. But in this world, he's 48 points. Did he have good people around him? No. I don't blame him for that, really. But he's just not, I don't know, he's not built for the EA engine. And I'm not really sold on him. I don't think I, don't think I really like him playing uh, second-line center. So I'm going to look to move Yanni Gord in the deal. I give them Yanni Gord. Um, I give them a defenseman, which is going to be Connor Murphy. That's more money off the books. And then I'm going to throw in a prospect. Probably Ness right here. Miknov, yeah, he's low elite, 61 overall, but Ness, he's probably never going to crack the lineup. Or, yeah, maybe he would, but I'm not looking to looking to grow a lot of people super long term. You know what I mean. So Jeremy Ness, Connor Murphy, Yanni Gord for these three guys. The trade value is in their favor, so I have to add a little bit more. Sorry, this is the guy I meant to say, not Miknov. Threl, Threl Fall. 48 overall, 18 years old. He's medium top four. We draft him in the fourth round. Will he grow? I've seen guys who are like 49 overall go to 80 within three, four years. But I don't know, man. I don't know. We have Jeremy Wild. We have Axel Anderson. So let's say let's let's say throw him in. Throw fall. So Gord, Murphy, Ness, Threlfall, and a second round next year for Jost, Broussard, Gerard, a third and a seventh next year. So we move down around the second to the third, and we give them, and we get a seventh as well. We give them a couple of prospects who, who we're not sure if they were going to grow. We, they were going to take a while. Lower overall guys. Don't like moving prospects, but like I said, lower overall guys, both in the 50s and 40s, for some surefire guys who are going to be in the lineup very soon. Take out the seventh. Forget it. And the next two years of fourths. Let's try that. 
trade accepted thank you very much Colorado two years of fourths for a second hate giving up picks and prospects but I think that was the right move to do for right now Yanni Gord wasn't liking him could he come back to bite us sure but I think that a lineup like this is gonna be much stronger and if I could these if these guys can be forever kind of slotted here for a while and the first line center just gets better this team could be this could be a decent team so I'm gonna work on these lines get back so this is how the lines would look first line Janssen Pavelski Marner second Kreider Broussard Nyquist I really like that line third Cogliano Jost and Connolly Connolly would have to be stronger I'd prefer a better winger fourth line Perot Beagle Carlson on defense, Hickey, Ellis, Moore, Larson, Muller, and Sam Gerrard. Special teams, I like the power play looking like this with Gerrard there with Ellis. People on their off wings. Broussard, a real uh, playmaker that we can trust. Uh, Corpusalo starting and scratched our Borgman and Wheel for injuries. So we're going to go like that for the, wheel, for, the, uh, for the lines for right now. We also dumped some cap, which is nice. Uh, we have four, just over 4 mil in cap. So with that cap, I'm now tempted to go, I was just saying I need a better third line right wing. I'm very tempted to go after Josh Anderson because with Josh Anderson, if I go to one year at, um, at 1.375, I could get him, but he'd have to sign the contract. That's the thing. So I'm going to offer it to him. No picks required. And we'll see what he thinks. If he likes it, he likes it. If not, then no worries. But that would be... That would be nice to get a better winger right there because uh, we're in that tweener spot, man. We could be a good team. I just don't know if it's going to happen yet. The last thing I want to do is sign one last scout because with 88k, I know it's pits, but at least I have enough. I'm going to sign Mac Don Dano right here. I have 88.542k, so I'm just going to give him what he wants so I can have. I can say that all my scouts are at, uh, I have full capabilities here. So Don Dano accepts the contract as a scout, which is very nice. Will Josh Anderson accept? Offer rejected. Yeah, doesn't want uh, the duration and the money is too low. I understand. So we're going to keep on simulating to the preseason. Let's go through and see what the stats are after the preseason. So in the preseason, we go 4-3-0, and finishing there on a 6-0 loss against the Capitals. Very nice. So 4-3-0, not too shabby. Tyson Jost led the way. He had five goals in seven games, six points. Pavelski 6, Nyquist 5, Marner 5, Brassard 5. So everyone chipping in, which is nice. Sam Gerrard got 3 goals. Cogliano, Kreider, Connolly, all with 4 assists each. Uh, Ryan Ellis, I would have liked to see a bit more. Jay Beagle at negative 4 is a bit concerning. Thomas Hickey at a negative 4 is concerning. So keep an eye on all of that. Adam Larson, absolutely garbage. Goalies, how was Corby Sal? 3 1 and 0. Oh. Grubauer is struggling 1-2-0, but he had the better save percentage and goals against average, so can't really blame him. Corpus Allo did have a shutout. So we're going to roll with that, and let's start off the season with those lines and all that ready to go. So all the scouts are sent into their regions to find prospects for the next three weeks just of pure looking. No specifics, so we'll check back in in three weeks. And without further ado, let's hop into the first game of year number two of the Brooklyn Bellows franchise against the Detroit Red Wings here, game number one. Are we going to be, what kind of team are we going to be? Vigilante scores on Corpusal, the guy that just got drafted last year. He's already in the NHL and scores his first goal of his career. A minute and 57 in, but Derek Broussard comes right back. His first goal as a Bellow. First period, sim the rest. Shots 12-10 in our favor. Power play, nothing from that. Second period, goal four, Gustav Nyquist to make it a 2-1 game in our favor. Here in the third now, tight game. Sveshnikov makes it 2-2, then Anthony Mantha with another to make it 3-2. Down by one, halfway through. But Melker Carlson on the fourth line ties it up at three. Melker, I was thinking if there's a man who's on the, on, on the outs, it's him. Power play for us, nothing comes from that one. Tyler Bertuzzi, 4-3. Anthony Mantha, 5-3. Dylan Larkin, 6-3. Nice. Three goals in the span of one minute and 13 seconds. Very nice. A five-goal third period, and we drop our first game by the score of 6-2-3. So we're going to go ahead and simulate about three weeks or so to check out the scouts then. So one, two, three. Let's go to the game against Colorado. Yeah, perfect timing. 
see our old friends in Colorado. Boys, we are looking decent out here with a record of 6-3-1. and one. We had a shootout win against the Capitals. We shut out the Hurricanes, and then we beat the Hawks for a three-game winning streak. Then we shut out the Wild. One goal against against the Golden Knights and shut out the Canadians. So we are 6-3-1 and one, going up against the also 6-3-1 and one Colorado Avalanche here. And Gustav Nyquist, 11 points in 10 games. That's very nice to see. We're going to go ahead and simulate it. We are, where are we? We are in Denver, Colorado. Brassard, Gerard, and Joe all against their old teams. Yanni Gord, Connor Murphy against theirs. Let's see how this one goes. First period, no goals. Second period, goals from Landeskog, Soderberg, and Landeskog. And we are down 3-0. to zero. Great job to just collapse in the second period. Is anyone going to come back and show life in the third? Will anyone step up? It doesn't look like it. Power play Colorado. Kill it off. No one is stepping up. Five minutes left. Go ahead and take the shutout. Uh, Varlamov or whoever's there. Uh, Novrath, of course. Even worse. Michael Novrath gets a 3-0 <laughs> shutout win against us. Let's not end on a bad note there before we check out the scouts. Let's go to St. Louis. Who are 8-4-0. and oh. Let's go up see this game against them. First period, goal for Mitch Marner, but Tarasenko and Shen make it 2-1 for the Blues. Second period, goal for Tyson Jost, but once again, Tarasenko and Short. So we score one, then let in two. Third period, down by two. Will anyone step up this time? No, Thomas Yurko and then Vincent Dunn. So Corpy Sal just is absolutely trash whenever we go and watch the game. Cogliano, mild concussion. That's not good. Let's edit those lines. And because uh, Melker Carlson is also currently injured, Jordan Wheel is not available since he's already in the lineup. So Marcus Felino, come on up to the NHL. He has five assists in 11 games in the minors. Congratulations, you've been promoted and you will play on the fourth line. And we're good to go. So now we're gonna check out the scouting. So now it's time to scout specific players now that people have been found. So I'm gonna go ahead and just assign a bunch of people. So that's all done. The scouts are gonna be busy until like December doing a bunch of reports. We are currently at a record of six, five, and one. Corpi Salo is struggling. Hopefully he'll pick it up. And we're gonna jump ahead to the game that is coming up against Let's go see the New York Rangers. Why not? They're 6-6-0. Six, six, and oh. God has heard our prayers. The Buffalo Sabres want to give us a second round pick in favor for another second round pick. And they'll take Eric Goodbranson. Now, I don't want to get, switch. Uh, well, let me see. Buffalo Sabres are 5-11-2. Okay, they are absolutely pit. So that it would be a good, to get, a good thing to get their second round pick. But I prefer to get their second round pick of this year. Ah, they don't have it. Of course. So could I squeeze in a fifth round pick if I give them back a sixth round, a seventh round pick this year maybe uh, from uh, the LA Kings? Could I squeeze in a, a fifth? What do they say to this? Trade accepted. Okay. Well, thanks Buffalo. Nice to see. Uh, nice to see that. Got four million dollars off our books, and we got a little bump in the pick i'll take it so we lose our second our second round pick this year but we gain a very important second round pick next year because we don't have a second round pick next year because we traded it to uh, colorado so let me just go ahead and fix the lines quickly here and also edmonton is 13 3 and 3 so that second round pick is not as valuable as the pick that they gave me plus i dump good branson so that was a pretty solid deal i feel lost a second for this year not only pick instead of one two four four I pick 144, but next season I get that second round pick and it'll probably even be better than mine. So, got to give and take in life, and that's what we're going to do. 9, 8, and 2 as we come to this game against the 9, 11, and 0 New York Rangers. I just went to free agency to sign a couple guys for the Burnaby Aces as well, as Marner scores first goal of the game. So, they should sign in a couple of days, and that'll fix up the lineups down there. Uh, also scoring is Tyson Jost, making a 2 0 lead for us. Second period, goal for Carl Hagelin and Mitch Marner. So that's two for Marner now, 3 1 lead. Will Chris Kreider get something on his old team? Oh boy. So Toffoli and Howden both score. Tied up at three, heading into overtime now. We're getting outshot by a, a considerable margin. Shootout winner for Gustav Nyquist, who's been on fire recently as we win this one. 4-3 to three the final. Two goals for Mitch Marner. 
two assists for Andreas Janssen. That is our 10th win of the season. Let's go ahead and simulate all the way up until... Let's say this game against San Jose. See Joel Pavelski going back to his old home arena. So we got Marcus Foligno back down in the minors. And we just signed Sitska and Jakob Jerebeck. So that'll help out Burnaby. Jeremy Y. I just saw he has one goal, 19 assists for 20 points in 22 games. Pontus Aberg, 22 points in 22 games. So Burnaby should be good, help the prospects grow. So here we are with a record of 15, 9, and 4 coming up against the 13, 12, and 3 San Jose Sharks. We're looking pretty good. I'm uh, pretty happy with the record thus far. Let's see if we can keep it up here in San Jose. Joe Pavelski, the captain, up against the team that he once captained. First period goal for Andreas Janssen. Second period, nothing. Heading into the third now, holding on to that one nothing lead. Thanks to Andreas Janssen. Joe Pavelski, he's getting old, but he's still leading the way for us. Giving that veteran presence in the locker room for all the bellows down in Brooklyn. Holding on with five minutes left to that one goal lead. Will it be enough in California? And it will. A big shutout for... Philip Grubauer, who's definitely been doing better than Corpusalo as of late. Andreas Janssen gets the game-winning goal. It's a 1-0 win for us. So let's go up until January 1st, and then we're going to check all around the NHL and see how our team is doing, how other teams are doing, and how other players are doing. Jordan Wheel and a fourth for a third and seventh. No, thank you. Wheel's actually been playing very well in the fourth line. He's been filling in mostly for Melker Carlson. So, uh, and Jay Beagle, who's back now, so let's go ahead and do that and get to January 1st. So looking at the lines quickly, I'm going to switch around Tyson Jost and Derek Broussard because of the plus minuses. He's a plus minus of 0, Broussard negative 11, so I wouldn't mind switching them around. Cogliano is definitely on the outs, goal and an assist, negative 2, he is not doing anything for us. Perot's been doing well, wheels okay, Beagle not too bad I guess for a fourth line center. And Pony Killer, I moved Larson down to the third pair. He's a negative nine. Sam Gerard, uh, only a negative one, so I'll put him on the second pair with John Moore, and we'll see how that works out. So here we are at January 1st, 2020. The Brooklyn Bellows have a record of 20, 11, and 6. I'm quite happy with that. Let's check out the player points right off the bat. Joe Pavelski is leading the way, first line, with 27 points in 37 games, 14 goals. Right behind him, tied at 25, is Nyquist and Marner with 25 apiece, as I just said. Ryan Ellis, I'm very surprised after last season that he's waking up with 21 points thus far. Chris Kreider has 20 points in 37 games, although he's a negative 12. Andreas Janssen, 20 points. Broussard, 16 points, negative 14, though. Tyson Jost, 14. Perot looking good. Uh, Brett Connolly needs to wake up. Sam Gerrard, 5 points. Now here's all the pigs at the bottom. Mirko, Melker, all those guys. In nets, it is Jonas Corpusalo, who is 15, 9, and 3 with 4 shutouts. 924 save percentage and 2.32 goals against average. He's been waking up as of late. Philip Grubauer, 6, 3, and 3. 1 shutout. 0 0.01 less on the save percentage and 0.22 more on the goals against average. I'm just flying with the quick math thus far in this series. Looking at the entire league, who's leading the way goaltender-wise? It's Bobby Lou. Wow, Bobby Lou at the age of 40 is 22-7-1 with two shutouts. Wow, Bobby Lou. Carey Price right behind him, Freddie Anderson, Miko Koskinen. He's six foot seven, really? Wow. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Jordan Bennington's up to an 83 overall. Okay, and let's see entire league for scoring, led by Vladimir Tarasenko and Connor McDavid, tied with 49 points apiece through 37 games. Barkov, O'Reilly, 42 points. Kucherov, Matthews, Sagan, Laine, Clayton, Keller, Mark Shifley, all with 40. So there is scoring around the NHL, which is finally good to see. The sliders are... Doing, uh, doing what they're supposed to do. Nick Patan, 33 points in 37 games. So this would be a guy that I would look to trade for, maybe. Nick Patan, what's his uh, trade value? It's not that high. So look, if I was to trade for Nick Patan, and he replaces Brett Conley on that third line, how crazy would that be, right? So that's something I'm definitely going to look at doing within the next couple minutes, even. Who else is surprisingly like a low overall who's high in the NHL? 
that's definitely a big one there. He he's definitely playing with like with uh, Matthews or you know I'm gonna look at their lines and see who's playing with. Ty Ratty has 32 points. Man, uh, Big Joe 32 points. Uh, anyone else surprising? Christian Fisher, okay. Nick Ritchie, yeah, no one else too surprising. Anthony Mantha up to an 88 overall, wow. And for rookie scoring, who's leading the rookies? John Quinville, 22 points in 20 games. Daniel Vigilante, they just signed, uh, they just got from the from the draft last season. Vladimir Dadnov, who went first overall last year. Man, or was it the year before? Yeah, year before, because 2018, yeah, that was the first... Uh, the first draft, but he was better than um, than what's his name, who uh, who was actually real, who only went second. Morgan Frost was looking at trading for him, but yeah, he's doing well. Nice. Okay, so I'm gonna actually look at Toronto's lines right right now and see what uh, how come Nick Patan is going off. Nick Patan, he is playing on the second line with Matthews and Hyman. So, but Hyman, he only has three goals, twelve assists. Patan is blowing up. But uh, it's definitely because of Matthews that he's doing so well. But I wouldn't mind trying to trade for him if possible. So let me see what I can do. Before I do that, let me just quickly check the uh, NHL stats uh, team-wise. Let's see how we're doing. Pound and kill, power play, and all that good stuff. What needs to be changed for us to be doing even better? We're second place in the Metropolitan Division. Division. Wow. Very happy to see that. In the entire league, we are in 13th place. Nice. So we're at 2.38 goals against uh, goals per game, which is still quite low looking at the teams around us above and below. 2.49 goals against per game is pretty average. Power play percent, 13.9 is pits. Look at all the other teams. But our penalty kill is doing well at 81.2. Still could be better. But man, 13.9%. Are we the worst team in the NHL on the power play? We are the fifth worst team in the NHL when it comes to the power play. Yikes. So we definitely want to work on fixing that. But before we do that, let me see what Nick Patan would cost for uh, in uh, in a trade. So they're interested in Connolly and Cogliano. Cogliano, I wouldn't, I probably won't be resigning at that cost. They're also interested in Perot, but I'd prefer to keep him. If it was one for one, they'd say no, but where are we? Uh, okay, they only want one guy to meet the need. Let me see what else I can do. And it looks like it's going to cost us a lot more than what we'd be willing to pay if we want to get Nick Patan. So see you later, Toronto. Tried to play ball with you. You didn't want to play. That's why, Toronto, you are an absolute disgrace to the NHL. Special teams, let's see who's struggling on the power play. So it looks like the second power play is what is the line that's struggling most. I'm going to try putting uh, Tyson Jost. Uh, let me see. Hold on. I'm going to try putting Tyson Jost at the point. And see if that does anything because John Moore, defensive defenseman, is not helping. And uh, maybe Adam Larson will get a little jump start there as well. So that's the only change I'm going to make to the lines. Those are the points. That's everything that you just saw. And uh, we'll continue simulating with all of that in mind. And uh, let's check out the scouting once the next uh, central scouting report comes out. And uh, we'll simulate up until this game against the Flyers, which are they are a very good team this year. So let's. Go see that one. And we arrive at this game against the Flyers, who are 9-1-0 in their last 10. But we are 6-1-3 in our last 10, with a record of 24-12-7. and seven. So this should be a good game. We're one of the better teams. Uh, Panthers are right, uh, Panthers. The Flyers are right ahead of us at the top of the Metro. This should be a big game if we can get the win. Early power play for the Flyers. We kill it. Let's simulate the first period. Goal forward, Jakob Vorchek. Ooh, and I simulated again by accident. It is 3-2. So Voracek scores in the first, Morgan Frost scores two in the second, then Gustav Nyquist and Tyson Jost come back to make it a 3-2 game heading into the third now as we are down by one. Morgan Frost, he is a good player. Tried to make some deals work for him. And Mitch Marner ties it up at three, very nice. But I couldn't get it done, especially the Flyers didn't have enough pieces. And Andreas Janssen, very nice power play goal. We're up by one. But it didn't work, so that's why I went to Colorado and did the deal with them, because Philadelphia didn't have the right pieces that I was looking to uh, to make a full deal work. And will that be enough? Yes, it will. Andreas Janssen gets the game-winning goal on the power play. Two goal, no, two goal game for Frost. Goal and an assist for Janssen. And that was a big win for us, as we gained two points on the Metropolitan-leading Philadelphia Flyers. Just four points ahead of us now. And let us now simulate up until... 
Let's go see this game against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, Tyson Jost back spasms. He's out till January 29th, so go ahead and replace him. Uh, so Central Scouting just put out their new rankings. Let's check them out. Uh, number one, Alexi Lafreniere, of course. He's been tearing up the queue. He has 61 points in 36 games. He's number one. Second, Justin Horton here. He has 54 points in 36 games in the U.S. Uh, UC Hall, he's a medium elite two-way D. Uh, Josh Lawrence, Cole Perfetti, Holtz I've not yet scouted. Grigorenko, our scouts like this guy, Grigorenko. Central Scouting has him at 7, but we have him at 5. Uh, Quinton Byfield I need to scout. I've sent scouts to him a ton of times, but they still don't know what's going on with him, so that makes a lot of sense. Same with these guys over here in the OHL. For some reason, they're not getting scouted. I keep sending scouts to go see them, but they're not telling me their potential. They're just telling me their uh, their uh, personality or whatever, even though I tell them, go for comparison and potential. Anyways, I need to find out stuff about these guys in the deeper uh, Liga, Russia, all those things, because uh, the scouts don't seem to be telling me, so I'm going to have to figure that out. But anyways, there are some good guys like this guy, Low Elite, who's going to go somewhere in the 30s. Got to find the gems. Like, this guy's a gem. He looks like he's going to be medium elite. So go ahead and pin him. I'm just going to go send my scout out right now and uh, find uh, find out what's going on. So it seems as though uh, the scouts, like I sent out this guy, hope to see these five players in the OHL. The reason why they're not uncovered is because it's not that they get uncovered as they go. It's that they get uncovered at the end of the date of the assignment. So his assignment is then February 7th, and that is when I'll know about Byfield and Stranges and all those guys. So I guess that's how it works. So with all that taken care of, we're going to keep simulating the game against the Penguins. Lots of headaches with the scouting, man. It's so crazy. The stuff, the not the stuff you got to do. To make sure they're all, everyone's going to the right places and doing the right thing and doing, seeing the right people and uncovering everybody. Such a buzz. So I'm going to go ahead and fix lines in the NHL and the AHL for the injuries that are, people are back from injuries. And then we'll simulate this game against the Penguins at Chicharo Arena. So back right here, we're taking on the Penguins, who are 23, 18, and 8. We're 27, 14, and 7. Just took a quick uh, break there. You wouldn't have noticed because it was a quick jump, but just had a ball hockey game fast, fast. Nice 7-2 win. Cracked it out. Big shout out to Sanji. Put on a clinic. Shout out to Genghis Khan, who's back in the retirement home. Derek Broussard on Matt Murray. And then Tyson Jost makes it 2-0. Tough time for the poor guy, but we cracked him 7-2. And now we are back in Brooklyn here at Chicharo Arena. First period ends like that, two to nothing. Second period, two more goals. No, sorry, one and one. Brett Connolly makes it three uh, nothing, and then Dumoulin made it a three-one game. Heading into the third period now, shots are even, up by two. Dangerous lead to have when it's playing with momentum, as I, as I've seen many times in my career. Halfway through the third right now, Phil Kessel brings the Penguins within one, three-two lead for us. Momentum is swinging. The bellows have to hang on tight. Will it be enough? And yes, it will. 3-2 victory for Brooklyn in this one. First star, Brett Conley, a goal and assist. Corpy Salo played well. And two assists for Matsu Peru. Very nice to see. So we are now going to simulate up until... Uh, this game here against the Islanders, why not? Let's go see our rivals in New York. And we'll go up to there. So in that last span of six games, we go... 2, 3, and 1, and now we're taking on the Islanders. We're at a 30, 17, and 8 record. Islanders are 25, 27, and 4. Let's see what they got. First period here, two goals for the Islanders, Josh Bailey and Evan Rodriguez. Second period, lots of goals in this one. It starts off with Cogliano and Girard making the game 2-2. Two two. Then Anders Lee and Ryan Pulak make it 4-2. Joe Pavelski comes back to make it within one, but then Spiza gets one as well. And now it is a 5-3 game heading into the third period. Lots of scoring in that period. Third, Anders Lee makes it 6-3. That may just be a bit too much, but Gustav Nyquist says we will not go gentle. And Janssen makes it a one-goal game. Bailey, 7-5, scoring off the charts. Josh Hosang, 8-5. My goodness. A crazy amount of scoring. And then 9-5 now as Josh Bailey gets another. Don't tell me we're going to go 10. That would be ludicrous. But even a 14-goal game. Wow. So we dropped this one. We scored uh, five goals, but it wasn't enough. Did um, 
Was it Grubauer and Nets for the whole game? Uh, yeah, it was. So Grubauer lets in 9 goals on 31 shots, does not get pulled. 7-10 save percentage. Don't know. I'm not sure if I agree with that one, Chief. And I skipped over the 3 stars. But, yeah, that was a wild one. 9-5 loss. Yikes. So, let's uh, jump a few more games, then we'll check out the stats, especially before the trade deadline. Uh, let's go up to... Um, Let's see this game against the Maple Leafs, and then after that, we'll check out the stats. Adam Larson, injured foot. He's out just for a few games, so I'm going to uh, quickly slot in Borgman. John Moore, MCL sprain. Great, so now I have to call up a defenseman to deal with that. So we go 3-1 and one in that last span of four games. Now take on the Maple Leafs. We have uh, almost an identical record as the Leafs. They just have one more overtime loss. Larson is going to sit out for one more game, then I'll bring him back against the, for the game against the Oilers. John Moore is out a bit longer, though. I called up Jakob Yerbeck to fill in. First period here, goals for Jean Seba, uh, goals for Pajot and Wheel to bottom. Goal for Pajot for the Leafs, and Jordan Wheel gets one for us, which is nice to see. 1-1 one, one game. Second period, two goals for the Leafs, Austin Matthews and Nazem Kadri. 3-1 lead for Toronto heading into the third. We're down 2-D. Uh, not surprised that we're slacking a bit defensively with Yerbeck and Borgman filling in, but we do have the capacity and capabilities to get one or two back. But I guess Freddie Anderson is doing well, and we are not going to get it. Zach Hyman scores an empty nutter, and that's all she wrote. So lineup is fixed, and we come to February 26th, a couple of games before the trade deadline, with a record of 33-20-8. At this point, we have played 61 regular season games. Uh, Mitch Marner is leading the way with 46 points. It's a pretty, uh, it's scoring by committee on this team, so no one's really dominating. Marner's doing very well, but no one's really dominating. Pavelski, 43 points, 20 goals leading the way there. Uh, Andreas Janssen, 40 points. That's very nice to see. Nyquist, 37. The second line really pits plus minus. Broussard, just in general, terrible plus minus. Four-star defense. I don't get it. Sorry. Broussard here. Yeah, yeah. Four-star defense. I don't get it. Uh, Kreider, 35 points. Ellis, 29. He's been slacking. Jost, scoring goals, but not getting any assists. 23 points. Wheel, 19 points in 53 games. That's cool. Beagle, 17 points. Uh, Connolly, Pitts. Perrault, not bad. Uh, the plus minuses are just weird. Sam Girard has 9 points. He's up to an 80 overall. Mirko, Melker, all these good guys. Borgman did what he had to do. 3 games, plus minus of 0. And goalies, who is leading the way right now? Is it still Corpusalo? Yeah, it's still Corpusalo. 26, 15, and 5 with 5 shutouts. That one game where Grubauer let in uh, 9 goals really ruined his stats, probably. He's playing well. 2.37 goals against average, 9.24 save percentage. That's impressive. I'm happy to see that. Uh, like, let's say number 1 in the NHL, 2.37. Same as Price, 2.37 goals against average. So Bobby Lou's still up there as well. Anderson, Varlamov. All the guys that you would expect to see. Points-wise, leading the NHL, it is Connor McDavid with 72 points. Tarasenko Sagan with 70. All the big names are up here. Is Nick Patan still up here? I wonder. No, I don't see him. Ty Ratty's up here. Uh, no, no surprising names, really. Jake DeBrusque, maybe. But he's 84 overall. Yeah, so it looks like Patan just fell off the face of the earth, eh? Uh, he's still here, 41 points, but whatever, bro. Good for you. And rookie skaters, who is looking at the Calder? It's currently Daniel Vigilant, Vigilante, John Quinville. Cool, 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 cool. So we're going to keep on simulating. We're making a push for the playoffs. Let's check out how the uh, teams are looking. We're at the top of the Metro. Yeah, very nice. Very happy to see that. We're at the t tied for top of the Metro. Our power play is at 15%. Yikes, and our penalty kill isn't that good either. Power play at 15%. That puts us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th from the bottom. Remember, 7th best team in the NHL. Wow, good to see that as well. Uh, penalty kill. Uh, penalty kill. Also not doing very well, 78.9%. So I'd like to work on that. Let me switch up some of the special teams lines. So I switched out some of the special team lines. Hopefully that'll do something. Let's simulate up to the trade deadline, see if anything interesting pops up on any of the trading blocks. 
Edmonton Oilers, we beat them by a score of 3-1. to one. And the trade deadline is almost upon us. And Burnaby, they're 40, 17, and 5. I forgot to uh, check out their stats. So in Burnaby, with 56 points in 62 games, is Pontus Aberg, John Sebastian Bello, 47. Eric Byer is very nice, 46 points, 20 goals through 60 games. And Jeremy Waugh, there he is, 41 points in 62 games. These two guys are the future right here. As well as this prospect, Mason Shaw, 33 points in 62 games. Good to see that. But anyways, the trade deadline is upon us, so I'd like to browse the trading blocks. It looks like we're going to be making the playoffs, boys, so I'd like to get some better wings. If we address what we are struggling on, it is the wing. So let's see if there's any interesting wing available for a cheap price of possibly trading Brett Connolly and a pick or something like that. So the only guy that's really giving me any interest uh, based on uh, contract and trade value and overall is Brock Nelson here. 82 overall, one year left on a 4.250 contract. Hasn't done anything special this season, but maybe in the right environment it would help. Plus, I'd just rather have him than uh, Brett Connolly or whatever. So if I could move him, who would be the Pitts guy on the way out? It would probably be um, Alex Cogliano, who has a good plus minus, but... Six goals, four assists, making 3.25. He's probably not going to come back next season. Neither will Perot. I wish I could trade them both, but that's going to be too much. Uh, uh, they could take them. If I could trade Cogliano and Perot, get Nelson and maybe another roster player. Oh, I could just call someone up from the minors. Yeah, if I could trade them these two guys and a pick for Brock Nelson, that would be nice to dump cap. Uh, I know it's not the biggest deal, but it would just it would be nice to free up space and not have to worry about should I have to resign them next season or whatever. 2021 fourth, you interested in that? Let, not in the right city, let alone ballpark. Because I see a lot of teams lining up for Brock Nelson. Uh, you aren't where you need to be with value, nor are we particularly off. Okay, so see you later, Brock Nelson. We will not be touching our team, looks like. And we're just going to ride it out. These are our boys, ride or die. The Brooklyn Bellows. Don't you dare touch them because they are unstoppable. Let's simulate all the way until... Bup, bup, bup. Let's see the Canadians. They're 41, 17, and 4. So let's go check out Montreal and see what's going on over there. So we go 4 and 3 over those last 7 games. And we now come to the Canadians with a record of 38, 23, and 8. Let's go ahead and simulate this game. Canadians are very good, 46, 17, and 6. But we are having a very good second half right now. We are holding on to the, that pace that we began. Drew Wayne scores an early goal. First period, another goal from Sevier, and then Brett Connolly. He, he comes back and makes it 2 to 1. Second period, goal for Drew Wayne, and I accidentally simulated the whole game. But it didn't matter. Two goals for Colton Sevier, and we lose 5 to 1. Let's just go ahead and hop to the game against the St. Louis Blues, who are 42, 25, and 4. Oh, latest uh, rankings from Central Scouting. Let's see what they have to say. Yeah, Alexi Lafreniere still at number one. He's tearing it up. 82 points in 49 games in the QMJHL. Uh, Cole Perfetti, all these guys. Quinton Byfield finally got some scouting on him. I'd love to get Quinton Byfield, a big six foot five center. He has 68 points in 49 games in the O right now. I would very, I'd be very interested in Quentin Byfield. So I went through all the scouts, reassigned everybody. Uh, it's, I don't know if my scouts are just pits or if they're missing. Ah, injured ribs for Andreas Borgman. I don't know if they're just pits or if they don't pick up things or if it takes them long to do their reports or what. It is just crazy how like these players are top and I know nothing about them. So here we are, Blues are 44, 25, and 5. We're 38, 26, and 9. Taking them on first period. Goals for Tarasenko and Barbashev. Tyson Jost comes back. 2-1 lead for the Blues. Second period, two goals for Shen and Bozak. Third period, yep, 6-1. Every game that I seem to look at is Grubauer in nets, and he's getting absolutely shellacked. So let's hop ahead to, well, season's just almost over. So let's just go to the last game. Why not? Against the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, Borgman's available. Great. Let me just go a bit. So in the NHL as a whole, the Montreal Canadiens win the President's Trophy with a record of 56, 20, and 6. They had a very good season. Top in the West was the Winnipeg Jets. 
Last in the NHL was the Buffalo Sabres, so good bet that hopefully they're also garbage next year when I got their pick in the second round. 29, 40, and 13, disgraceful. Ottawa Senators also tied with 71 points. They went 32, 40, 43, and 7. Islanders, Red Wings, Devils, Knights, Rangers, Kings, all rough seasons. In the NHL, uh, uh, regarding the points leaders, it was Vladimir Tarasenko who led the way in goals and points with 95 points and 53 goals. Connor McDavid, 92. Patrick Kane, 90. Sagan, 90. No big surprises as all the big names that you would expect to be there, they are there. Jonathan Drouin, 75 points is a bit of a surprise. Uh, Jane Schwartz, 73 points. Gallagher, 72. Uh, yeah, a couple surprises, but all the big names are there. Zadina got 66 points in uh, 82 games. He's 82 overall. Huh. Ilya Kovalchuk is still alive, 81 overall. He got 66 points. He would have been interesting to look into for a trade. Rookie skaters, it was Vladimir Dadnov who ended up getting 46 points, 88 overall, after being the first overall pick two seasons ago. Man. A few, a few other names in here. Samuelson, who just got drafted last year. Yamamoto, Eli Tolvanen, Hellebuck, Crawford, Luongo, Rask, Anderson. All the names are up there. Carter Hart looks like he's developing well. 87 overall. Michael Novrith is somehow doing pretty well. Bobrovsky over on the Vancouver Canucks, 28, 24, and 5. Elvis Mers Lincolns is the starting goalie over in uh, Columbus. He went 27, 25, and 10. Interesting season all around in the NHL. And that's going to be it for this one, uh, regular season-wise. So let's start advancing and see who our round one opponents are going to be. So in our first ever playoff series, the Brooklyn Bellows will be taking on the... Carolina Hurricanes. All right, so the Hurricanes, let's go ahead and check out their lines. So Carolina, obviously the top line, very, very nice. Sebastian Ajo, he had a 65-point season, 31 goals. And Andrei Sveshnikov is on his right, 60-point season. And on his left is Toivo Teravainen, who had a 53-point season. Not as good, but still very nice. Martin Nikas had a good year. He uh, 32 points for a rookie year is not bad, but he's 86 overall. Nino Niederreiter, Michael Furland, Joran Stahl. Not a lot of people to be super worried about in the bottom six, but that's a good top six. Defense is always strong in Carolina as well. Justin Falk, 57-point season. Dougie Hamilton, 42-point season. Jakob Slavin's very good. Brett Pesci is very good. So they are a nice team. Goalies, it's Simeon Varlamov in Nets. He had a 35, 31, and three seasons, seven shutouts. Got Darling backing him up. Anyone scratched? Hayden Fleury, no one too crazy. So Carolina is a good team. They have a strong top six and a good defensive core. Our lines are going to stay as they are, as they've been for the end of the season, looking like this. Uh, Jordan Wheel, you know, like when you look at names like Jordan Wheels on our third line, Derek Broussard was atrocious defensively, but the playoffs are a whole new season. You never know what might happen. John Moore is still out. Jay Beagle is out. So it's going to be Melker Carlson at center. Do I want to have 60 face-offs? 75 face-offs. So Cogliano will go center just for now with uh, Carlson and Connolly on his wings. Defense will look like this. Adam Larson didn't really deserve to be any higher than uh, bottom pairing, so I'm going to keep him where he is. And uh, starting goalie, of course, Jonas Korpisalo. So I think that's it for this one, boys. Went through a nice season. We made the playoffs, did a lot of scouting. And uh, next uh, episode, we will sim through the playoffs. Might be quick, might be short. My, I'm thinking either I will... If I were to get eliminated in the first round, it would be... A type of video where it's just quickly do the playoffs and then go straight to the off season. If it were to be an actual playoff run, the entire episode would be just the playoffs. So we'll see what's in store next game, uh, next episode. We'll see what the stars have to say for us. But that is it for this one. Thank you for watching, and I will see you at Chicharo Arena for Game One of the playoffs.